Hi, Jan here. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here and you've not been before. Um, it's just um, just under a week to Yule, so well I think um, yeah, it's it's Yule um, is or midwinter solstice is I think about half past three in the morning. Um, this time next week, next Friday. Sorry, it's Friday today. It's next Friday half past three in the morning on the 22nd of December 2023 but I will be celebrating on the 21st of December so this morning I just woke up and I started to mentally think what do I need to do what do I need to get ready you know um, because we will be going to the um, All Cannings Long Barrow which we do on the midwinter solstice to um, celebrate the sunrise there which is um it's quite a long drive for us. It takes us an um, hour and a half to two hours to get there and obviously the, the same on the way home again. Um, because we've got to leave so early in the morning, the sunrise is due to... Um, sunrise is around about eight, ten past eight in the morning. Um, but we gather there before then because um, there'll be a lot of people coming along for a celebration there and usually we greet the sunrise with the Druidic Arwen so um, I've got my daughter is um, coming over to we've got to leave about four o'clock in the morning which is too early to feed the dogs because we won't be home till um, sort of early afternoon and they will need to go out um, and relieve themselves from the night before and also if we fed them before we left they would need to go out at some point during the day so I've got my daughter coming to the house to do doggy duties for me so that we can leave nice and early but as I say I was just thinking about you know I know what I'm going to wear but I've got to um, I've got to get my druidic robes and my cloak packed up ready to go in the car which is a very simple job in and of itself except for the fact the fact that my ro my cloak is black and will just suck up any dog hair before we go so I try not to allow it near anywhere that's got any of bear's fur because bear's a big white dog as you may have seen and I don't want to turn up coated in in dog fur but I've got to get that ready to go and then I was thinking about my staff so I thought I would just jump on and tell you the story of my staff because it is you can't see the whole of it in this frame because I'm sat down and there's nowhere for me to stand back so that you can see it in its fullness let me move it across for you obviously that's the top as I stand up that's where my hand is in a stood position in between these you can see the twists in it here and here which is I actually don't know what the wood is but this is where honeysuckle has grown around the wood and then the wood has been shaped by the honeysuckle it's got quite a bone like look to it now and the story of it goes like this um, way back in the 80s or 90s um, I was a practicing hypnotherapist and I had a client who had said that his girlfriend was a massage therapist who was interested in doing um, a swap treatment with me so I would um, do some hypnotherapy for her she would give me a massage in return and uh, we had begun to do this and become quite friendly and she had invited me to her house at some point by this time they had split up as a couple she was no longer with him but I got to her front door and as she opened the door this was lent up on the outside in the corner where the door was and I said oh what a beautiful staff it was still all covered with its bark at this point and she literally just went it's yours and just kind of thrust it towards me and said it's yours and I said no no I can't and she said no he had been a woodsman he, his job was was in forestry and she said he would want you to have it 
what can I say? <laughs> I was just so honoured. So Julie came home with me after our visit and then I spent a considerable amount of time stripping the bark from it which going round the twist there you can see was um, I actually still have a scar on my wrist where I was um, very foolishly using a very sharp blade and accidentally it slipped off the wood and onto my wrist so <laughs> I wasn't cutting my wrist or anything like that I, it just happened to be on my wrist where the blade fell and I have a scar to remind me of doing that. And then once the bark was all stripped off, I treated it with beeswax and turpentine to um, to keep the wood in good condition. And regularly I still go over it with, um, with beeswax and ter turpentine to keep it nice and, and good condition. And it has been my faithful companion at Pagan events ever since. And especially now that my balance is so poor and I really do rely on having something stable with me that um, it's lovely to be able to have this and so it travels with me to the long barrow and then I don't need to use walking sticks or anything because I've got my staff that I can hang on to. I have Neil on one side and my staff on the other side. So I will be packing my staff um, I've got a a bag that um, I actually sort of hang from a waist. It's it's a um, would you believe it's a designer mulberry bag, but it suits the outfit that I wear, and that's just to pop um, essentials in: hanky, mobile phone turned off, <laughs> um, and all the bits and pieces that I just kind of want with me car keys you know that sort of thing so I've got that I've got my um, leather belt that I wear over my robes um, like I say my big black cloak and this year it will be the first time that Neil's going to wear his cloak that I made for him videos if you go back in the history you'll see some making of the cloak videos because I've had my cloak um 20 25 years something like that and Neil has always wanted one like like mine so I actually made him one for his 50th birthday which was last January but there haven't been enough pagan events in very cold weather that he's had the opportunity to use his cloak so this will be the first outing of Neil's cloak so we'll turn up like <laughs> like a matching pair because we've both got because I made them same robes same cloaks he's got a different staff to me because that staff is absolutely unique and I've had so many comments over the years about how wonderful it is and I'm just so blessed to have it you know it was a gift from two people that I cared very very much about one person I don't know if if he ever knew that it ended up with me you know, like I say, the couple had split up by the time it was gifted to me. So I don't know if he ever spoke to her and found out that she had passed it on to me or not. But anyway, Neil has a staff that he's cut himself and, um, and made for himself. So it's totally different to mine. Um, and I will be wearing my... Uh, I've got some fur-lined Wellingtons they're like snow boots which it, the weather forecast is looking good but in even in good weather at this time of year the ground's going to be damp as you walk across it so it will keep my feet dry and a little bit warm because they do get very very cold and we will be stood there for waiting for the sunrise and as the sun rises and then we'll be going into the barrow um, you know, last time I went, I said that I was going to, I was hoping to get some footage there. I, again, hope to, but it all depends on, you know, what's, hap what's happening with other people because sometimes people don't want to be featured in a YouTube video. So if I go in and there's other people in there, then I can't film if there's somebody in there paying respects to their loved one because the long barrow holds the cremated remains um, 
and some people just go because it's an open day so it's an opportunity to go inside the long barrow and and see it because it really is an amazing place and some of us have niches in there um i bought my one for me but i i already had my mother and father's ashes and we were just trying to decide my sister and i were trying to decide what we were going to do with them because after dad had died for the three years in between my my dad dying and my mum passing, I was saying to mum, what do you want us to do with your ashes? And all she ever said is, I want to go in with daddy. But she didn't say where or what. So um, dad had been in a single casket, so we bought a double casket. So they're both in the same casket. But then what? And my, you know, we'd been debating back and forth, my sister and myself over the years, what we would do. Then I was watching, the reinterment of Richard III, which um, if you don't know that story, please go on online and there are, there have been films made about the finding of Richard III, much less his reinterment. But the day that I was watching that on TV, I had the TV in front of me and the casket with my mum and dad's ashes and I thought I have got to make a decision something has got to be done otherwise I will die and then there will just be somebody else trying to make a decision about what to do with with my mum and dad so at that point I contacted the Tim who built the barrow he's he owned the land and he built the barrow and arranged to buy a niche and then my mum and dad were interred at the Long Barrow on a midwinter solstice. As I have said in a previous video, they both died three years apart on the midwinter solstice. So it was just absolute perfect um, that it would that they would both be going to the Long Barrow. And because Neil and I, as pagans, would have gone to the Barrow regardless. We are now going there as pilgrimage, but also as a place to honour our ancestors. And of course, <laughs> my most immediate ancestors, my mother and father, are already there. And interestingly, when I did my family tree many, many years before that, my mother's family comes from that area of the country. So it just seemed, everything seemed right that that would be the place that my ashes would go, that my mum and dad would end up, and Neil and all the dogs. My son has expressed an interest in wanting to be there. So we go there. We try to always make the midwinter solstice. The midsummer solstice, because the barrow is aligned to the midwinter sunrise, in the opposite direction, the barrow is also allowed aligned to the midsummer sunset so we tend to go there um, at midsummer as well where we all gather on top of the barrow and face the sunset which has been quite spectacular in past years so anyway that was me just wanting to jump on just trying to catch up because my vlogmas videos have gone a little bit awry um i've missed a day or two so i thought well i'll to be brutally honest, I'm procrastinating. I should be in the other room changing my sheets right now. But I thought, no, I'll come and talk to you instead. <laughs> so thank you for my, being my excuse today. And then um, tomorrow, um, going down to my son's. So may or may not, it's forecast rain. So may or may not take some footage on the way down there. Um and then during the week various things going on so i'm hoping to get caught up and do some more vlogmas over the next couple of days so do bear with me but for now i'll say goodbye lots of love bye